What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode this is episode number 147 and we start today's episode off with some training here and check this out Marco Ryan Tyler has grew a rating but not to 91 no he's gone back up to 90 you may not have noticed it just before that training started there I did slow it down to its normal pace usually I speed up quite a bit but uh, yeah Ryan Tyler after progressing into February after January transfer deadline day ended right at the end of the last episode had somehow dropped to an 89. Now, I don't know how that's possible, but he did. He must have decreased in a stat somewhere. I didn't notice it anywhere, but either way, Ryan Tyler went down to an 89 and after that new batch of training, he's back up to his rightful 90. So, I was livid about that. When I noticed it going into that training, I was like, how on earth has he dropped a rating? Seriously, the guy's in really good form. He has been ever since he's come to Milan. Come on now, seriously. But uh, still, he's back to his uh, rightful 90, so panic over. It's all good. He's back to the 90 overall and and uh, yeah, that's that's really good to see. I'd have been so annoyed had he stayed at 89. But uh, still, following that, a look at the squad report here. Of course, the last episode, deadline day, did indeed end. So we are officially done with transfers in this series. We signed three new players, Robert Lewandowski, Lucas Toro, and of course, the last one, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. And you see right now, with the signings of Lewandowski and Toro, I have changed formation as well. Loftus-Cheek sits in the resis, but Lewandowski will play up top with Morata in a 4-2-4 as Bakic will drop to the bench and Lucas Toro will occupy the second CM slot alongside Marco Verratti. Uh, in the Serie A table, as you can see, with five points clear of three teams, Juventus, Napoli and Udinese in second, third and fourth, respectively. In the Tim Cup semi-final, we've been drawn against Juventus and we'll take them on over two legs. And of course, in the Champions League as well, that'll be coming in two episodes time. And then 149, we'll be taking on Real Madrid in the Champions League round of 16, first leg. So excited for that. But yeah, three new signings coming coming into Milan on deadline day. Really, really happy with the business we did. Spent over £60 million on deadline day. Of course, Verdi left the club as well in order to go to Stokes as part of that Loftus-Cheek deal. And all three of those players, Loftus-Cheek, Lewandowski and Lucas Toro, would make their debuts here against Cagliari away from home. When you're looking to bring goals into your team, as this side are, you can understand why Robert Lewandowski was top of their list. Well, for a number of years now, he has been one of the best centre-forwards in European football. And uh, nothing I've seen over the last few months has changed my opinion on that. If we're looking for energy in midfield, which I think the manager is, from what we've been talking to him about. And uh, a new signing today with that in mind, I guess. Yeah, I thought they'd looked a bit short, a bit flat actually in midfield previously. And he is a creative player as well. And so coming into the first game of today's episode here, away against Cagliari, using the 4-2-4 for the first time, changing formation to accommodate players. I never really like to do that, to be honest. I always feel like the team needs to remain structured if they're playing quite well. And we've been playing quite well, really, all season long in Milan. We did lose the last game, of course, only the second defeat of the season, though. So changing from the 4-3-3 formation, I do like to the 4-2-4. How would we do? How would the three new signings do on their debuts? Lewandowski up top alongside Morata, Lucas Toro alongside Verratti, and Loft this cheek starting it right back in this game in the absence of the injured De Chilio. Well, we get up to the perfect start because just 29 minutes in, one of the new signings would score on their debut, and it was the man you'd expect to score as well. Robert Lewandowski heading in a Marco Ryan Tyler corner and getting his Milan account up and underway inside the opening half an hour of this game. So Cagliari nil, Milan one. Lewandowski comes in, scores a goal 30 minutes in to his Milan career, and I'm just delighted about that because. Because, again, I discussed it in our last episode. He's 32 years old. We spent over his valuation on the guy. You know, he was out of contract in the summer. On the face of things, it may seem like a bad deal. But due to the fact this is probably going to be our final season, he may only decrease in one or two areas this season. And I'm totally fine with that because he'll end up being higher than Origi would have been regardless. So Lewandowski coming in, one of the best strikers in the world and already proving that of a goal on his debut. So really pleased with that. But to be honest, in this game, we lost Cheek starting to right back. I was really nervous to see how he would do as well. We've played him all over the pitch you know, for Watford. So in Milan, not really sure where we'll accommodate him and where we'll fit him in, but I played him in right back in this game and he actually had a really good start to the game as well. Looked really competent at the back and almost scored in this debut as well. Six minutes after the restart, was played through there just inside the area, shot from a tight angle, but Gaita made the save and kept it at 1-0. We were looking a far better side though for the entire first half and started the second half, uh, second half off really brightly as well. Ryan Tyler going pretty close there. We're looking for a highlight goal, if you will. Chest in the corner and then half volleying it just wide the post. And then again, in the 67th minute, 
once again going for a volley just outside the area. This would have been one of the goals of the season or, you know, the goal of the series, really. Unbelievable effort from Ryan Tyler. First time strike, unfortunately, hits the woodwork and eventually Cagliari got the ball away. They had a late chance here to grab an equalising goal here. Destro was played forward, but what a stop that was by Djokovic. Didn't have much to do in this game, but was alert there to make the save and show his concentration. So still 1-0 and the final chance fell to Cagliari in the 88th minute as they kept on going, looking for an equalising goal, but again, Djokovic was equal to the shot and Marco Sao spurned the rebound. So final score, Cagliari 0, Milan 1. We do win, uh, get back to winning ways in this area after losing the last game to Udinese at the San Siro. Winning this game was great to see. Uh, clean sheet, always good to see as well. Lewandowski scoring his debut. All three new signings played quite well in that one. We deserved the win as well. Really pleased with that. And the 4-2-4, four, four, uh, four, four, I do believe this formation did work pretty well in that one. The only worry I have with this formation is that late on in the games, the opposition team are going to exploit our lack of midfield. So that was the one thing I noticed from that Cagliari game. You know, looking at it from a tactical point of view, it was fine for the majority of the game. It was totally fine. The 4 4 was fine. I didn't feel exposed at the back until the final 20 minutes or so when Cagliari looked for an equalising goal. They overran us in the middle of the park, really. And then having four players left up top around the halfway line as they were coming through to attack, that's not really positive. So I think this 4 4 I will probably keep it because I do like the look of the formation. And I think we should continue to score quite a few goals with it. You know, having four players in attacking positions. But I think late on in the games, if we're winning by a goal or drawing or whatever and need to hold on to a point or three, I'll probably switch to play a 4-3-3 three, three or something like that because it's it's a good formation, the 4-2-4, but again, the midfield balance is the problem, really. The two central midfielders tend to get stretched out wide due to the lack of wide midfielders, and that leaves a lot of gaps in the middle of the park, which is never good. But uh, either way, for the second game of today's episode here, we will take on Carpi back at the San Siro. Losing our last game in front of our home crowd at home to Udinese, we had to put it right in this game, and just seven minutes in, what a start to the game as well because Marco, the magician, didn't score in the last game game. He did get the assist for the Lewandowski goal from the corner, but he does score here and make it 1-0 to the home side. He goes down the right-hand side, cuts into his stronger left foot and finesses the ball past the goalkeeper. And how many times have we seen that since we came to Milan? It's all because of you guys as well. You guys told me to play Ryan Taylor on the right wing as opposed to the left wing where he had been playing for the majority of his Watford career so he could cut onto his left foot and shoot. You guys called it spot on. He's been fantastic there and he scores once again from cutting in from the right. So Milan won, Carpi nil, but Sadly for us here, Carpi would have a chance to equalise from the spot in the first half soon after our goal. Back at starting this game, took down our former striker Jurgen Lacadia, who we sold to Carpi in the summer, and he wins a penalty for the away side here. So a chance for Carpi to equalise. The number 99 would stand up and take this one for Carpi in the 22nd minute. A chance to equalise for the away side here at the San Siro, and unfortunately for me, despite trying to put him off with Djokovic, he couldn't make the save, and the away side do get themselves back on level terms. So Djokovic, of course, uh, pulled off some penalty saving heroics a couple of episodes ago against Lazio. Got nowhere near that penalty, though. He was sent the wrong way, and it is an equalizing goal for Carpi, and the away fans are loving it. So 1-1 one, one in this game, and, you know, I, I do believe we will concede a few more goals playing this 4-2-4, but I'm, you know, I'm okay to take that risk. It's just I didn't really want to give them an easy goal from the spot in this game with a silly challenge from back it. But uh, that was my fault, really. Nothing to do with the formation change. But either way, Milan won, Carpi won. In the third I think we were still on level terms, but it's Donnarumma who picks up the ball here. He plays that wide towards Marco Ryan Taller. Is he going to cut from the right onto his left once again? Well, as you can see, he's teasing the defender, gets past him, gets taken down as well. And for the second time in the first half, the referee is pointing to the spot. First to give a penalty to Carpi, now to give a penalty to Milan. Ryan Taller teases the number 18, who does win the ball here, but only by coming through Ryan Taller. Clips his left foot before poking the ball behind for a corner. And that's why the referee doesn't give a corner, but instead give a penalty. Penalty. So both penalties, in my opinion, were spot on. Great decisions by the referee and both were the correct call. So 1-1 one, one and a chance for us to score our penalty and make it 2-1 and for us to regain our lead. Ryan Tyler goes to the, uh, to the top right and once again, as you can see, the goalkeeper is sent the wrong way. Ryan Tyler converts the penalty. He rarely misses and it's Milan 2, Carpi 1 as the skipper gets his first brace in quite a few games. So 2-1 to Milan. We are back in front of this one. Once again, it is the magician with the goal. Really nice penalty as well, right into the top corner, no chance of the goalkeeper, and he dived the wrong way regardless. So the skipper scoring once again, 17 goals in the Serie A already, still a long way to go in the league as well. Surely he's going to win the Golden Boot again, and surely he's going to surpass his 20 goal a season that he got last year. But either way, it is 2-1, we're back in front. From kickoff, Carpi gave the ball away, Ryan Taller won it back, we sent down the right-hand 
side after playing a 1-2 on Morata. Cuts inside onto his stronger left foot and once again, Marco Ryan Tallis shows that is his best strength when cutting in from the right and going for goal with his left. He reminds me of a certain Iron Robin, Marco Ryan Tallis. He's not Robin, he's Ryan Tallis. It's a really nice goal there. Cutting inside once again. Nice little step over. Then a roulette to take it round two defenders and then finish round the third. He sort of used that third defender as a shield there to curl it round him and uh, sort of put the goalkeeper off really. He was behind the skipper. So really nice finish there from our captain into the top corner. 3-1 to Milan and a first half hat-trick for Marco Ryan Taller. The first time he's ever done that and it's his 18th goal in the Serie A this season. So an unbelievable half from Marco the Magician. I took him off at half time. You won't be surprised to know that as we had a game in midweek. So Milan 3, Carthy 1. With 9 minutes to go, Carthy had a good chance to get themselves back in the game here and cause us some sweat late on but your coach made a great save here and kept it a 3-1 and it was also how the game would finish as well. We win the game by two clear goals and get ourselves another three points. So after losing to Udinese in the last game, it's back-to-back -back wins for Milan and Marco the Magician with his second hat-trick of the season, his third overall. All three have came whilst wearing a Milan shirt. He wore the track suit to collect the match ball but he won't care. He walks off the pitch delighted. He wins the game for us with all three of his goals that helped us overcome Carpi by three goals to one. I thought a 7.9 as well was really, really harsh, even though you only played half of the game. But that does it in today's episode of Career Mode, though, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave likes. Of course, much appreciate it. Really my channel out. Hope you enjoyed having a double episode upload day, and uh, I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.